Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. This building was a, the first firehouse that served the Cold Spring Harbor community. And it was purchased, or it was rented by the community after a public meeting for $40 a year back in 1896. At that same time, they voted to purchase a hook and ladder wagon. Prior to that, they only had one piece of firefighting equipment that served all of Cold Spring Harbor. That was pulled by men, and it was much like a wagon. And what they would do is they'd find a source of water, they'd pull this wagon to it, they put two hoses in it, one in the front, one in the back. The hose in the back went into a stream or a pond or maybe even a well. And you get about eight or nine men on either side of it. They pump up and down just like a, a seesaw goes up and down. And they'd be able to project a stream of water about 120 feet. That was the only piece of firefighting equipment other than, of course, the bucket brigades. The men facing the women, they'd line up at the pond. The first person that held the bucket was the dipper. He dipped the bucket into the pond filled with water and he'd keep passing to the gentleman next to him and so on and so forth, sometimes as much as a quarter or a half mile until they got to the fire. The last person in line was a thrower and he would throw the water onto the fire and then he would hand the empty bucket to the first woman across from him and the ladies in turn would pass the buckets back to the water source. And when there was a fire, this would draw the whole community together because unless people worked together, as neighbors and as friends and helped each other in a time of need, the whole community could be lost to the ravages of a fire. Fire buckets, they don't have flat bottoms. They have a round bottom or a conical bottom. And then we start asking people, why do you suppose the bottoms are that way? We've had scientists from the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory scratching their heads and determined to figure that out. They discovered DNA, but they can't figure out why fire buckets have strange looking bottoms. And the answer is very simple. If they have a conical bottom or a round bottom, they can't be put down. They can't be used for something else. But this building itself, again, was leased for $40 a year in 1896, and it was located just about 400 feet up the street next to where the Cold Spring Harbor Firehouse is at present. About five years ago, the firehouse planned an expansion. They were going to tear this building down, and a group of us got together, and we moved this building here. We have restored it. All the wood that you see in here is the, natural, the original wood. And it's only 15 feet by 30 feet long. It's part of our history. It's part of the community's history. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. You just don't tear something like this down. You must save it. We do have a Nickelodeon. The Firehouse Museum, and we're probably the only Firehouse Museum in existence with a Nickelodeon. Uh, the Nickelodeon is from 1900. Uh, we don't know where it was first located, but we do know the music is all original. And what that does is play the music of the 1900s. The tinny sounds scream out at you as you come in, and when people see that, they just stop. They stop in their tracks. We have our first hand pumper from 1852. We, which represents a period in time where horses didn't pull this equipment, men pulled it. We have photographs of the next piece of firefighting equipment that this community had. That was a hook and ladder wagon that was pulled by horses. And we have photos of the second piece of firefighting equipment, which was the steamer that is presently in the Hudson in New York uh, Firefighting Museum. It represents the interim period of firefighting. In addition to the fire trucks and Nickelodeon and some of the equipment that we, we've been able to garner, uh, through the graciousness of the New York City Port Authority, we were able to acquire a piece of steel from the World Trade Center. And Wood Craftsman uh, created this, his name is Craig Becker, created this wonderful cabinet for it. Another thought of a glass tower to replicate the World Trade Center, and then we were able to get the names of the 343 firefighters who perished on September 11th. Uh, we started the restoration about five years ago. It was a two-year process between getting all the approvals, moving here, restoring the building, putting a little addition on it, and we've been open for three years. Firefighters come here from as far as Colorado, from Oklahoma, different places. They come here, they stop in, and they say, wow, I wish we had saved our first fire truck. And we have at present between five and 8,000 people that visit us each year. We're only open on weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from 12 to 5, and, and uh, 
always by appointment. Anybody wants to come here for any reason, we'll be here to show it to them because we love this facility so much.